this is such a terrible idea. Um, good morning, friends. It is currently 10 to 4 in the AM. Can you see that? I need to prove that it's 10 to 4. And I just woke up to start my 24 hour challenge. It kind of feels like, you know, when you get up early to go on holiday, except it's nothing like that. It is nothing of the sort. I am not even leaving my flat today. It was funny up until it was 4 a.m. on the morning of the challenge. Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up at 4 a.m. and then just read constantly for 24 hours just YouTuber books. I remember a time in like 2014 to 2015 where books were coming out more frequently than YouTube videos. It seemed as though every YouTuber on the platform had written a book or had hired someone to write the book for them. And because I am just late to pretty much every trend ever, last week, my book came out. <laughs> this was always the biggest dream of my whole entire life. Not only to write my very own book, and yes, I did write every word, but to walk into a bookstore and see it there on the shelf and this week that actually happened which was crazy but this video is not about my book no this video is about pretty much every other youtuber book imaginable and so i did a little shop and all of these books arrived and you may be thinking jack that's a lot of books well that's half of them <laughs> because i also ordered all of these <laughs> so um i'm an idiot i don't know why i thought this was a good idea and i am regretting it Instantly, I literally have a literature degree. So normally, you know, I'm reading the work of Austin, Shakespeare, Dickens, today, Sprinkle of Glitter. Now I have realized that reading all of these books is not actually possible in 24 hours. So I'm gonna read all of the books by the British creators, like the OG Brit Squad, Zoella, Joe Sugg, Tanya Burr, Marcus Butler, Jim Chapman, Dan and Phil, we've also got the Sidemen, KSI. We've got the whole bloody gang. It's like the Summer in the City lineup, 2014, in what is going to be the most ambitious crossover of all time. If you would like to see a second video where I read American YouTuber books, then let me know because I have them, but for now, I'm going to leave you with the video. Um, good luck to me and good luck to you for watching it. And yeah, let the challenge commence. On tonight's program, ladies and gentlemen, we have something that's gonna make you sick. So I'm gonna get started with the challenge now. No, I don't wanna talk about it. Okay, look, you can see the time at the top. I'm gonna start the timer now so you can see that I'm actually doing this for 24 hours starting right now. Okay, so the first book that I'm going to be reading today is Girl Online by Zoella's Ghost Ri Zoella. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is like the most successful YouTube book because Zoella's Ghost Ri Zoella became the fastest selling debut novelist of all time. So that's pretty wild. So I'm intrigued to see what Zoella's Ghost Ri Zoella has to say. It's gonna be a Bloody long day. Okay, so the sun is coming up. I'm sitting here reading Girl Online. <laughs> Basically, at the end of chapter 29, there's this kind of like kissing scene. It's very romantic. They're falling in love. And then the first line of chapter 30 is, Penny, Penny, he came. <laughs> and it's talking about Father Christmas. <laughs> but I just can't help but hope that's meant to be a sexual innuendo because I found that hilarious. This royalty-free audio genuinely triggers my fight or flight response, so I'm sorry to put you through that as well, but I needed a backing track and it just felt appropriate to use this one when reading Girl Online. So basically I finished up Girl Online and then I moved on to username Evie by Joe Sugg, who is Zoella's brother. Okay, so I have just wrapped up both Girl Online and username Evie by the Sugg siblings, <coughs> ghostwriters, <coughs> gonna something in my throat, I think. Honestly, both of them were pretty good, especially Girl Online. I actually think this has a real substance as a story and I enjoyed reading it. The one thing, and it, it's a pretty major thing, is that the two kind of love interests are 15 and 18, which is very much illegal. Like, Penny and Noah actually aren't really that age appropriate for one another. No offense, see what it did there. But I might have enjoyed the novel a little bit more had the main character not been a nonce, you know, just personal preference. Username Evie is a graphic novel, which isn't what I would normally pick up for myself, but I have read graphic novels in the past. I read one for my degree, for my English degree, and honestly, they can have a lot of potential. Definitely don't rule things out just because they are graphic novels. The thing is, the graphics in this book are beautiful, however, I don't think Joe Sugg did them. It says at the beginning that he like came up with the story and then other people sort of just made it happen, so... 
Fair play. I mean, yeah, they were both pretty good. And now we'll move on to the next book. The next book is This Modern Love by Will Derbyshire, which I've wanted to read for a very, very long time. Oh, I am glad that page one has a little arrow so that you know um, how to use the book in case um, anyone wasn't sure. Just kidding, I'm not putting you through that again. Another book done. This was pretty good and wholesome. I don't think it was groundbreaking, really. I think it's a nice thing to sort of have around and pick up every now and then, rather than read it from start to finish. Very much adequate. Okay, so I apologize because I'm pretty sure I had cookie all over my face in the last few clips, so. Sorry about that. The next book we have today is the book I am least looking forward to. Is that pretty awful to say? I just don't know why Marcus Butler has a book or what he will have to say, but I am intrigued. It's called Hello Life. I don't know how many of you used to watch Marky Butt Butt here, but he used to go like, hello, um, at the start of his videos. And so I think it's meant to be like, hello life, as opposed to like, hello life. How are, you, how are you doing? How, how are the, how's the wife? How are the kids? Marcus Butler made his name on YouTube for being totally ridiculous. Also, we are nearly at the nine hour mark. Right, firstly, we have Hello Life, Marcus Butler with Matt Allen. Who is Matt Allen? Is this ghost written? Because if so, I'm upset. I'm also upset by how many images there are of just Marcus Butler's face. I would like a refund on this book just for this picture alone. This book is full of top tips, like don't bring a selfie stick to the gym. I don't think you'll ever forget the first time you read this book. Never, under any circumstances, ever wink at them. How to avoid a haircut disaster. Never ever cut your own hair. Like, who asked? Who asked for this advice? Marky Butt Butt's giving out exam advice now. Didn't realize he was a study tuber. Final judgment is this was the biggest waste of my time ever. Personal highlights of this book include this photo of Marcus Butler licking a brick for absolutely no reason. Like, there's no men there's no reference to bricks at any point. Also, when Marcus admits that he used to buy gig tickets and then sell them at an inflated price to people for some reason. And there's the police now. <laughs> Oh god, I've really grasped him up there, haven't I? Marcus, they are coming for you. But the quote in this book that really just takes the biscuit for me is when Marcus says, I'm a world record breaker, not a knob. <laughs> so, I don't know, this one definitely feels like writing a book for the sake of writing a book, or getting someone else to write a book for the sake of writing a book. Sorry, Marcus. Sorry to this man. Having said that, though, nowadays, Marcus Butler is actually doing some very cool things. He's just started a sustainable fashion company with his girlfriend. I want to say her name is Stephanie Germanotta, but I think that's Lady Gaga. <laughs> and I think that their company is actually very cool. However, I may have just tarnished any chance I had of working with them in the future. At the 10 hours, 41 minute mark, we are moving on to The Amazing Book is Not on Fire by Dan is Not on Fire and Amazing Phil. I really want to like this because I really like these two people. So we shall see. Ah oh, yes, finally some essential reading. And Phil actually studied an English degree. I did not know this. And Dan Dan did law, so basically Jack Edwards and Eve Cornwell are quaking. Now this is something I can actually use. Obviously the idea bank is running a little bit low uh, since I'm currently reading YouTuber books for 24 hours. Choose your birth month, October. Make a music video about a sock. Oh, that's it. That's the whole thing. Um, I will call it We Will Sock You. And now, whoa. We're halfway there, whoa, time for Tanya Burr. Okay, it was a stretch, but I was working with what I had, and I am ready for a book written by the queen of TikTok. No, I'm not talking about Charlie D'Amelio, I'm talking about Tanya Burr. Aw, look at her, she's just such a happy chappy. Okay, let's go. Right, boys, I am taking notes. Okay, at the end of the book, Tanya recommends some books. Look, there she is, enjoying a good book. But she has spectacular taste, I, I've got to give it to her. Tanya knows her stuff. So, love Tanya. And I do, I do love Tanya, but this book basically reads like one massive long blog post. Like the longest blog post of all time. I mean, you can definitely tell that Tanya wrote this book, which is cool. However, and this is really petty, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to do this, but there are just so many exclamation marks. Why are there so many exclamation marks? Why is everything exclamatory? What was the reason, Tanya? What was the reason? Maybe that's just me or internet culture that's corrupted me, but for me, one exclamation mark kind of comes across like sarcastic, but this whole book can't have been sarcastic. I think she was just genuinely excited about fucking everything. So yeah, that's that done. Okay, nearly 14 hours in. I'm enjoying the fact that these autobiography style books are 
a lot quicker to read, mostly because they have very little substance. <laughs> Can I say that? I mean, the damage is done, I've said it. I said what I said. The big decision now is which to read next. We've got Louise Pentland's Wild Like Me or Jim Chapman's 147 Things. I don't think I even know 147 Things, so I'm quite intrigued by this. This is fiction, this is non-fiction. Do you know what? I think we're gonna have to go with Jim Chapman just for old time's sake to complete the iconic duo that was Tanya and Jim. These two were honestly just so wholesome and wonderful. I mean, they are divorced. Too soon. Too soon to bring that up. I'm not over that yet. Also, Tanya's book really hyped up Jim Chapman, so I feel like I'm in the mood. I've been indoctrinated to want to read Jim's book now, too. So, let's read 147 things. Hopefully, at least three of them are valuable. That'd be three more things than Marcus's book, to be fair. <laughs> My user's guide to the universe. Wow, thank you for the free promo, Jim Chapman. From black holes to belly buttons. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Jimbo, this is not massively appealing. Anything to do with belly buttons is a bit of a no-go zone for me. My top tip when you ever dare to read a YouTuber book in public is to get it in hardback so you can just do this. Slip off its cover. No one has to know. And that's why mine doesn't come with a cover you can take off because we need all the free promo we can get. You think you're getting away with that? No, you're absolutely not. We are 10 pages in and Jim is talking about his testicles. This is quite different to Girl Online, I won't lie. Okay, did I get a Domino's pizza for lunch? Yes. Do I want to talk about it? No. So today we're just gonna have a little treat. I want a pizza there. I'm losing my goddamn mind. The good news is that we are two thirds of the way through. The bad news is that there is still a third to go. <laughs> okay, so I never want to read a YouTuber book ever again, but that isn't a freaking option because we've got eight more hours to go. <laughs> oh my god. I have 50 more pages of Jim Chapman's book and then we can move on to something new. However, I just remembered that I prepared for this moment. I anticipated this exact thing happening. I knew I would hit a wall and I would start flagging like a freaking Union Jack. That's how much I'm flagging. And yesterday when I was out, I bought myself a coffee that I could have at this moment in time when Things started to look bleak, you know? I would not normally have a coffee at 7 p.m., but uh, bon appetit, my friends. Okay, I'm gonna sit outside while it is still light enough to do so, because the sun is starting to go down, and I can't believe I've been reading since the sun came up, and I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> wow, did you know that genophobia is the fear of knees, or that ombrophobia is the fear of rain? Did you know that? No? Did you care? Probably not either. Pretty much all of these I would just consider being an attention seeker. But then again, I make YouTube videos, so who am I to judge? Genuinely, I'm going to praise this book. This was pretty good. Jim Chapman is definitely a good writer and I enjoyed the autobiographical elements because he actually has something to say. Unlike some of the others, he actually has some quite major life events in to do with domestic abuse, his uh, childhood, family illnesses and grief that he has gone through. And I genuinely think this has value. So Jim, you get a big gold star from me, my friend. Friend. Next up we have the side men. I've just read the first 50 pages of this book and it is very 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 similarly done to the Dan and Phil book except just not as good. <laughs> okay just wrapped up with another whole book. This was interesting. It was just like not really for me. I mean I don't really watch the side men and never have so I didn't really understand most of what was going on and things like them doing a secret Santa for each other or what emoji would each of them be. I was just like I don't really care. Did that stop me from reading every damn word? No. No it did not. And we are 18 hours in. 18 hours and 20 minutes and now I am gonna start cooking some dinner but while I do that I'm gonna start the next book. So, Aloha Sprinklerinos. The next book I am reading is Wild Like Me by Louise Pentland, who incidentally released the book on the same day as me. I think Louise has a cracking personality, so I'm really intrigued to see the way that she writes. And while I do that, I'm gonna cook up some halloumi fajitas, or at least attempt to. This is the only other novel I've actually got, aside from Girl Online, um, so like actual fiction, as opposed to kind of semi-biography, semi, -biography, semi random stuff being printed on the page because these people aren't actually old enough to have a biography yet. Also, just because this stuff isn't high literature, it doesn't mean that it's not good. Like, you can have escapism, you can have books that you read just for pleasure, it doesn't always have to be the next Ulysses, you know? I don't think we were expecting Sprinkle of Glitter to write the next Virginia Woolf novel. A few people said about my book, like, it's not exactly high literature, is it? And I was like, yeah, it's not high literature and it's not claiming to be. You know, not every book has to change the world or find its way into the literary canon, it can just be a book that has a purpose uh, or can be used for escapism and joy and pleasure, like, 
I don't know, it's a weird way to value things, to be like, is this gonna change the planet that we live on? So anyway, I'm gonna read Wild Like Me and cook my dinner. So there we go, We've got peppers and halloumi, tortillas and some avocado, gonna be divine, and of course, wild like me. Okay, it is quarter to three in the morning. Am I going insane? <laughs> Maybe. But I just finished Wild Like Me by the head sprinklerino herself, Louise Pendant, and how did I feel about this book? I thought it was fine, it was well written. I could see the people who this was aimed at really enjoying it. This book was not aimed at me. <laughs> this book is very much about being a woman, being a single parent, being a mother, and I am none of those things. As a 21 year old boy, I, I this just wasn't really aimed at me. Like the first time the term yummy mummy was used, I just thought, yeah, this is really not for me. Honestly, I would like confidently recommend this to someone else. It's very much like Miranda Hart does parenting. And now I reckon I have time for one more book before we reach the 24 hour mark. Oh my lord! It has been a long old day, I will tell you that for free. <laughs> the final book I am being subjected to today, I mean going to read today, is I Am a Bellend by KSI. I actually met KSI once at Thought Park and he was not a bellend at all. So looks like I am going to be learning how to be a YouTube beast. Um, that's how I'm gonna spend the early hours of this morning. And I will see you on the flip side. <laughs> Guys, I am so freaking tired. Literally the last thing in the world that I care about right now is KSI's masturbation habits, but that's what I'm currently reading about because apparently that's, that's what belongs in this book. Make it stop. <sighs> okay, sleep is really trying me, but we can beat it. We can beat it. Actually, it sounds like KSI's beating it. <laughs> Seriously, why is that in this book? So in a day in the life of a YouTuber, apparently at 3.12 a.m. Oh my God, that's literally the time. 3.12 a.m. Relieve the tension. I've gone well past the point of pleasure. By now, just dust is coming out. But as the video hits a million views, I'm entitled to a joyful celebratory wank. <laughs> Whether my dick likes it or not, take it, dick. Ah. My grandmother watches these videos, so we're gonna just move on from that. Oh my God. It's happening. It's happening. And with that, we are done. Yes! 24 hours of only reading YouTuber books. Completed it, mate. Oh my god. <sighs> that was intense, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so ready to sleep. Having now read all of those books, what I would say is the best one I read was Girl Online by Zoella's Ghost, um, Zoella. And then the worst probably Marky Butt Butt or KSI. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I said it. But you know what is out now? My book. I will leave a link down below to where you can get yourself a copy of The Universe, The Ultimate University Survival Guide. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more from me down below. If you would like to see a part two with American YouTuber books, then, I mean, I have them. I have the facilities for that. So if you want to see me suffer again, then you can. For now, I've been Jack Edwards. I have just spent the last 24 hours reading only YouTuber books. It is now 4 a.m. and I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.